Good morning, Taste Buds. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. And before you shove your going bad fruit and vegetables down the disposal, check out what I'm doing today. I'm giving you recipes for that produce that's seen better days before it goes too bad here on SoFlo Taste. Chef Michelle Bernstein coming to you from the Goya Kitchen at J World in Coconut Creek. Do you feel bad when you end up tossing out your old fruit and vegetables? It's like tossing out money. Actually, it is tossing out money and hard work and sweat and energy. So today, I thought it would be fun to share some of my recipes that save that fruit and vegetables from the garbage. So let's get cooking. First of all, I want to show you the difference between fresh just purchased broccoli and this is a broccoli that's been sitting around all week. Um, you can see that the leaves start separating. It gets a little softer and wiltier, but it's perfectly fine. So let's make broccoli and cheese soup. I also had some kale in the fridge that I actually harvested myself from my own garden. Sadly, if I don't get to it within two days, it looks terrible. And I'm gonna throw some of that kale into the broccoli cheese soup. Now, a lot of times people throw this part, the stock away, but if you use a peeler, this is actually, to me, the tastiest part of the broccoli. Go ahead and peel that. It takes a little bit of strength because, you, well, you need a good peeler because this is pretty kind of woody. You can cut it with a knife as well, but once you take that off, this is beautifully tender on the inside, especially when it's a little bit older like this one. It gets even woodier, but once you get that, you cut this off and then you cut it into little pieces like this. And this is gonna make an even sweeter broccoli soup. So let's jump in and start making the actual soup recipe. We're gonna start out with butter because we're making a roux, but I always love a tiny touch of olive oil for a little bit of flavor. Rather than jumping into the roux right now and adding flour, we're gonna cook onions, really nice small diced onions. Broccoli and cheese soup would be nowhere without a little bit of minced garlic. I'm adding uh, about two to three garlic cloves. And at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and add the more kind of stem and woody part of the broccoli to soften it up real good before I add the tops of the broccoli. I don't know if you love croutons in your soup. Everybody in my family does. So I went ahead and just made some yummy buttery croutons out of old baguette. Another thing, that you don't want to throw away because all of your old bread can turn into breadcrumbs, can turn into croutons like this. There's so many things that you can do with old bread. Take that old bread, dry it out in a nice low oven, about 250 degrees. Once it's really dry all the way through, you just grind it up. Food processors are amazing at making breadcrumbs. All right, so we're cooking up the onion, the garlic, and the broccoli stems until they're really nice and tender. I'm gonna get a little bit of a head start on flavor. So right now I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt. I don't add black pepper to this because I don't love the black specks. You can add white pepper or I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne. So I already have my blender top ready. I'm gonna go ahead and puree some of this, but not all of it. But right now we're trying to build flavor. Before I add that flour in there, let's go ahead and get this older kale my geriatric kale ready. So let's take the leaves off and they're a little soft, but no worries. Once you cook them, no one will ever know. Some of them are crispier than others. We're not making a kale soup, but we're just adding a little bit of kale into this. So I'm gonna take this, the tender stem, the center, and cut it up a little bit and put this in now too. Let's get that all really good and soft. It already is smelling good up in here. You know, once you add onions and garlic to anything, it's already gonna be delicious. So there's not much work you have to do after that. I'm gonna go ahead and add my flour, same amount of flour as butter. Really wanna work that in before you start adding any liquids to this. I'll let that cook for a second. Let's go ahead and cut up this kale so that it almost disappears within the soup. I'm gonna start by just bringing it all together, cutting it really nice and thin. That might be enough. And then turn it the other way 
and again, cut it up nice and small. All right. Our soup is ready for liquid. Now, I have chicken broth, and I also have a little bit of milk. You can use either or both. I'm going to use both. To me, chicken broth just adds not only flavor, but a natural viscosity, obviously, from the chicken bones. This is turning into a beautiful, creamy, what's called a velouté right now. We're going to add a little milk to this, see where we get. I kind of just add little by little of each until I get to the texture I want. Okay. I like a little more chicken stock than I do milk, though. Let's go ahead with a little more broth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have soup. All right. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it to be too thin, but I also don't want it to be too thick. I think this might be our sweet spot. This is just some of the broccoli that is already cooked down. Now I'm going to add the tops. And what we're going to do is we're going to let all of this get nice and tender, which should only take me about five to eight minutes until everything gets good and tender. And then I'm going to blend half of it. All right, so this is beautifully thick. Now I'm going to just take broccoli and I'm going to make some for some floaties in the soup. But what we're going to do now is make this even more delicious and we're going to make the kids want to have it. So what am I doing now? I'm adding cheese. We are making broccoli and cheese soup. So I've got some grated jack cheese and cheddar cheese over there. So that's about half the soup. Let's go ahead and blend this up with the cheese. So like I said, this is grated jack and cheddar, but you add your favorites. All right, let's go ahead and blend this really nice and smooth. Oopsie. I'm gonna go ahead and just add all this cheese to it now because I have it and why not? I've never had a broccoli and cheese soup that had too much cheese in it. So let's set that in. Okay, we have a, mm, yum. All right, so I'm gonna add this back in. Yes, that's what I wanted. All right, now I'm gonna add more of this chopped kale, little bits of um, broccoli. We're gonna add that in so that we actually have pieces of broccoli to eat as we eat our soup. Don't forget, all of my recipes, including today's, are available on the SoFlo Show's webpage. Just scan this quick response code for immediate access to the fabulous SoFlo Show's page. You'll also see this QRC on the ingredient list throughout the show. Come right back for some more fruit and veggie money-saving recipes. Come back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Michelle and the food. This is SoFlo Taste. SoFlo Home Project is next, right here on Local 10. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. Here's something shocking. The United Nations estimates nearly half of the fruits and vegetables produced worldwide are wasted each year. In the United States alone, nearly 30% of all food is tossed. That adds up to approximately $48 billion. Now, I don't expect that my recipes obviously will put a dent in that figure, but it can help your grocery bill. Now back to saving food. All right, I've got some old stuff and I got some new stuff. Let's talk about the old stuff first. First of all, I don't put tomatoes in the fridge because that's kind of a crime. And I always have them out ripening, but sometimes over ripening. Instead of tossing that out, just cut a little piece out that might be a little, let's just say, older, rotten. But the rest of the tomato is delicious. And you can either make your favorite tomato sauce for anything, but I'm going to make you a very quick kind of a crudo tomato sauce for fish. And I love this because it has salty and sweet elements to it. At the same time, that fish, I've got beautiful swordfish. Thanks to my friends over at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. They have every type of fish you could ever imagine, local, and some from the Northeast, because we know a lot of our friends love those type of fish, like beautiful fresh codfish. But they also obviously have, by their title, lots of chicken and ducks and goose and all kinds of stuff like that, and steaks. 
They're just wonderful. Call them at 954-983-6831 or place an order with them in person because they are awesome and tell them Michelle sent you and ask them what they love for the day because they will always give you great ideas when you're in store. So let's jump into pan grilling this uh, swordfish and making the stew at the same time. They should get together pretty much at the same time. Ooh, and I have another one. So you know how herbs always go bad so much quicker than we can use them? So I have some really old basil here. I've got some older thyme and rosemary. Let's make a quick oil as well. Let's jump into that really fast. So I've got thyme and rosemary. I've got old basil. Let's put all that in a pot. Let's add the zest of one lemon to that pot as well to give it a little more flavor and freshness. Some red crushed chili flake, no salt, not needed. Let's go ahead and top that with whatever oil you want to be your finishing oil at home. Do not bring this to a boil because if you're using a good oil like an extra virgin, it will break down the oil, denature it, it won't taste like the delicious olive oil it is. What we're gonna do is just barely warm it off, take it off the heat, let it come to room temperature, and I love these things, you know these takeout containers? This is a quart container, this fills four cups. So I just pour the room temperature oil in here, throw this in my fridge, and then I always have beautiful basil oil for anything I wanna to toss and warm through. Got it? Good. All right, we'll use that in a minute to top our fish. So let's go ahead. I already sprayed a little cooking oil in that pan. Let's just go ahead and season a couple of pieces of this beautiful swordfish. I don't think it needs anything else pretty much. I'm just gonna throw these on here. All right, go ahead and season the other side so that we don't forget. A little pepper. And before I forget, I wanna show you my soup. Look how beautiful our creamy, delicious broccoli kale soup with those older croutons. Well, let's call them older bread into delicious buttery croutons. And that can be stored in your freezer or in your fridge. So for this sauce, I'm gonna heat up a little bit of this basil, rosemary, chili oil. And we're not gonna get it very hot. It's gonna be a warm tomato stew. A little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of crushed chili flake. We're gonna do golden raisins and capers in a minute. But for right now, I've got my tomatoes. I did not peel them. This is just a nice, fresh, warm tomato sauce. It's kind of like a salsa, but it's cooked. So we're kind of somewhere between a salsa and a sauce, I guess you could say. I'm gonna go ahead and season the onion and garlic now so that it will taste good all throughout my tomato. I'm gonna even put a little spoonful of my basil oil on my swordfish steak. Let's see how this guy's doing. Yep, time to just flip her to the other side. Okay. And it's time to put some tomatoes into our sauce. Now I'm using plum here because this is what I had a little overripe in my kitchen. You can use anything from cherry, grape tomatoes, cut in half, to beef steaks, whatever it is you got, throw it in here. It's all good. We're gonna warm this, allow the tomatoes to really just kind of start breaking apart. Our oil is now hot. Let's remove that from the heat so it doesn't get too, too hot. Let that come to room temperature. Let's flip over our steak. I call swordfish steak because it really resembles a steak. And I never cook swordfish all the way through. Most people like their swordfish about medium rare to medium. This is coming together beautifully. You see how the tomatoes are starting to soften and break apart. All right, when you come back, the swordfish will be perfect medium. The tomato stew will be about ready. Let's go ahead before you walk away so you see how much caper. I'm using very little caper and raisin. And I'm gonna splash in a little bit of red wine. So a tiny little splash of red wine. We'll have all this come together. Another recipe in a minute, so hurry up and come right back. SoFlo Taste will return right after this.
Welcome back to the SoFlo Taste. As usual, I am coming to you from the fabulous JA World. It's a great educational venue for our kids. For more JA World information, visit jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. And thank you all here at JA World. We love you. Now back to something good. Okay, everybody, what to do with all those berries that go bad? Well, before you start getting mold on them, or you can cut out that mold, but when they get dark like this one is, just cut off those little pieces of darkness. So you cut out anything that might be going bad or a little darker mushy, right? And then you just cut it in half. I have a variety of raspberries, blueberries, and strawberries that were on their way. I'm gonna make you the most delicious and simplest marmalade you've ever had. Weigh out how many overripe, and mix them if you want with not so ripe berries that you've got. If they weigh, let's just say two pounds, then take exactly half of that, one pound of sugar, and add that into a pot. Add two ounces of lemon or lime juice into your pot. I'm done here. That was pretty simple, right? Best way to make marmalade. Let's just make sure that all the lemon and sugar are down underneath, and we're just gonna let this boil away, and we'll come right back to it. Let's make a perfect scone to go with this delicious marmalade. We're gonna start out with flour. We've got all-purpose flour. Let's combine in it a little bit of sugar, a pinch of salt, a little baking powder, and let's whisk up the dry ingredients. To that, by hand, we're gonna work in some butter, and we're gonna combine two eggs with some buttermilk. All right, this is homogenous. We're gonna leave that alone for a second. Let's go into the flour and butter. We're gonna combine this, flatten out the butter with your fingers. It has to completely, completely combine into that flour. All right, so this is almost completely combined. I really wanna make sure that I push through all of that butter into that flour. All right. This is finally combined. Let's go ahead and add the buttermilk egg mixture, making a little bit of a well. When it combines, we're gonna go ahead and just put that onto the table. Now, let me get the fish out of the way first, and I don't know if you saw the fish, but this is our gorgeous swordfish with our tomato stew. See how the tomatoes are still in pieces, but they're starting to just juice so good with the capers and the raisins, so yummy. Let's put that aside. Now that this is pretty much as combined as it can be in a bowl, I'm gonna put it out on the table. And what's great is you don't need like bench flour or anything with this. It actually works better if it sticks to the table. So let's bring this together. Oh, we're, yummy. Our marmalade is starting to boil we really want it to boil like crazy. Really important that you get a lot of bubbles at the beginning. You want it to go on full high and then we'll lower it a little bit. The dough is just starting to come together. I'm gonna go ahead and add the currants. This is a dry dough. So just keep working it because it will come together. And you don't wanna really use a mixer because you don't want it to overwork. You just want it to come together into a nice, nice dough. All right, so the next thing you do, we're gonna flatten this out a little bit. I like them a little tall, so I'm gonna probably, with my hands, only flatten it out to be about a half to an inch tall. And then we're gonna use a little ring cutter. And then we're gonna brush it with a little bit of heavy cream over the top and bake them. And we'll eat them together with this marmalade. So come right back. I'll finish this recipe right after this. Welcome back everyone to SoFlo Taste using all the things that we can find in our fridge and on our counters that we can use again. So let me show you how the scones come out. I'm gonna cut this in half. And this is our marmalade. It's really nice and thick. And it only took me about 10 to 12 minutes. But you can always put them in some fun jars and keep them in your fridge or give them out as gifts. This is 
a gift that keeps on giving, I think. So I love to serve scones with whipped cream or double cream as they serve in England, but to me, a little bit of whipped cream and a little bit of this marmalade. Not too bad, right? I sure hope I gave you some great ways to save your produce from a sad end. And the best part is, these recipes are really, really tasty and good. So next week, I'm going back in time to bring back some yesterday Florida recipes with some today twists. Yep, I'm going old school on the next SoFlo Taste. So let's say good morning now to Elena Capra, host of SoFlo Home Project. Good morning, Elena, what's next? Hi, Michelle, good morning. So today's show is dedicated to Father's Day. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we share great design ideas on creating the ultimate man cave for dad. So Taste Buzz, thanks for watching and please take care of yourselves and I'll see you all next week. Goodbye and good taste. not lost.